fresh Filipino fare in Oakland, a celebrity chef with a passion for prime cuts from San Francisco. You want the crap? And Cantonese classics in Walnut Creek. Wiener, wiener, hot dog wiener. <laughs> Just ahead on Check Please Bay Area. It was like a potato cloud from heaven. I could sleep in it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Joining me at the Check Please table today are homemaker Amy Finn, Bay Area native Stefan Weiner, and administrative assistant, Tanisha Wallace. Welcome everyone, Thanks you ready? Yes. Yes. Super excited. Yes. Yes. First up, Tanisha. Her latest find offers lush cocktails, classic Filipino food, and a serious island vibe. In the heart of Oakland's Temescal neighborhood, it's Fob Kitchen. Can you garnish me? When I wanted to open up a Filipino restaurant, I wanted to make sure that it was something that Filipinos felt proud to come into and bring their friends. There's great music, a great ambiance, there's cocktails, and there's a cool vibe. <laughs> Why did I call it Fob Kitchen? Fob means fresh off the boat, so it's almost like you're for a person who just comes straight from the Philippines. Ta-da! You're foreign, which we all are. Like, I started thinking of my family who taught me how to cook, and I want to be proud of them, and I wanted to empower the word. So I took it back, and now I feel really glad about my decision because people will message me on Instagram, and they'll say, I'm FOB, and they'll be very proud of it. All the recipes or all the things on the menu, are favorites of mine growing up. When we would go to family parties, I would eat so many Shanghai Olympias and my friends would eat it and I'm like, I wanted to learn. And so I cooked with my grandma and she showed me the recipe. We do house ground pork, uh, water chestnuts, celery, carrots, onions, egg yolks to bind it all and some a little bit of patis, which is fish sauce. And we roll Olympias, deep fry it. Crazy. And we serve it with a sweet chili sauce. Mm. I have a lot of vegetarian and vegan dishes, and Filipinos are predominantly meat eaters. So changing that out, making like veggie stocks or substituting certain things, or taking meat out and making it have that umami flavor, that savory flavor. Yes. Yes. And it's good with the hot sauce too. Yes. Yeah. That's like your homemade hot sauce. Yeah, we make that in-house. I, I love to get out there and connect with people. Thank you. Thank you so and wanted to let them know I'm so grateful that they came in to eat here. And it's funny because my grandma comes, she's come into the restaurant maybe like twice when she comes and visit from the Philippines. She's like 92. I'm like, what do you think about the lumpia, Nana? And she's like, it's good. And I'm like, it's your recipe. Now, Tanisha, how did you find and discover this place? I eat um, in Oakland quite a bit and the Temescal quite a bit. And as I was walking down the street, I could hear the music coming from inside. Mm -hmm. The first time I went, they were playing Aretha Franklin. <laughs> and one thing anybody knows about me is that I can't sing, but I do sing. <laughs> and the cook behind me just started belting the song out. And I was like, oh, okay, now this is a vibe, but we're gonna do, have a duet here. Yeah. It was awesome. And is there one dish that keeps drawing you back again and again? Each time I go, I have to have the pancit. It is a vegan dish, and I am very much a carnivore, but it's awesome with the glass noodles, the way that it's seasoned, it has string beans, onions. It is a really flavorful dish. We also had the pancit so ting hong, because you know, I'm actually half Filipino, so I eat a lot of <laughs> Filipino food at home, and there's a lot of pork and meat in the dishes, so it was really refreshing to try the flavors without meat, and it was really interesting to see how they could do that. I started with the uh, sinkamas ensalada, mm. and it was like a coleslaw with carrots, cabbage, right. and like a, maybe a zest of lime as well in there, and some sort of vinegar, 
and it just all came together so wonderfully and my friend was vegan so she just dined on that but we were like stealing that off her plate to go with our chicken our crispy chicken that we also started with I'm just like a like, chicken skin girl I just really like the chicken skin yeah, and it just had the flavor of the chicken and it was just really authentic and they had this hot sauce that came with it and it was just divine with this chicken mm -hmm. their hot sauce <laughs> deserves to be bottled it is so delicious. Is it eye-popping kind of hot? It's not eye-popping okay. hot, but it's hot enough to get you going. It is awesome. Stefan? We also had the pork adobo. I think it's the national dish of the Philippines, and the special touch they did was they added coconut milk to it. So it was very velvety and creamy, and it was amazing. I couldn't wait to spoon more of that sauce on top of the garlic rice and even the pancit. So it was really special, really good. And then um, we ordered the veggie lumpia, and it's sort of like a crispy, almost like a spring roll, but mm -hmm. it's got a special sort of vegetables that would be native to the Philippines. And then we had that with that hot sauce, and it was it was really nice. Yeah. Right. I had the tocino with the garlic rice and a fried egg on top, and that was just so flavorsome. I really enjoyed the pork. I'm not a big pork lover in general, but the way this was cooked, it just was out of this world. And I would definitely try the pork in this restaurant 100%. Again, I completely recommend it. <laughs> yeah. My friend had the deep fried pork belly, which I think is called le lechong. Let's get the expert over here. Oh, yeah. Pronounce it. yeah, lechong kawali. Lechong kawali, yes. And it was just, again, like there's nothing they can't do with this pork. They do so many magical things with it and I highly recommend getting some pork if you're going to visit this restaurant. One of the cocktails that I had was the Juhu Beach cocktail and I believe they named it that in homage of the restaurant that was in the same space before. It was an Indian restaurant. So this had an Indian rum, chai, cardamom, it was wow. a I think I had great that one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I think I had that cocktail too. It was sensational. Yeah. It was really delicious. Yeah. We had uh, the hollow hollow, which means mix mix in Tagalog, and it's like shaved ice. Hollow hollow is everywhere now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, popular, it's everywhere right? now. <laughs> but yes, it's shaved ice with condensed milk and a bunch of things inside. You know, sometimes there's Rice Krispies, there's like jelly beans, and a, a big scoop of ube ice cream on top. It just, pretty and yeah, purple. It's pretty and purple, and you you know eat as much as you can, and once it melts, you can drink it all down. Right. It's great to see Filipino food modernized and becoming popular. You know, growing up, not a lot of people tried Filipino food that aren't Filipino, so it's great now that Amy and everyone else can we can all go enjoy Filipino brunch together. So you're thanking Tanisha right now. Yeah. <laughs> For finding this place, right? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. If you would like to try Fob Kitchen, it's located on Telegraph Avenue in Oakland, and the average tab per person is around $25. Home of the Golden State Warriors, the Chase Center is a state-of-the-art venue for show-stopping events year-round. But if you're looking for something far beyond arena dogs and brews, you might want to check out Stefan's alternative. It's a swanky steakhouse where impeccable service is all part of the show. In San Francisco, it's Miller and Lux. I am in love with steakhouses. I have been ever since I was a little kid. So where we are right now in Mission Bay, between 1860 and 1906 earthquake, used to be the largest meat packing district on the West Coast. And it was uh, founded by uh, Henry Miller and Charles Lux, and they were known as the Cattle Kings of California. I am so proud to carry the torch for this great immigrant story, great cattle ranching story, great California story. I'm an American chef, and I think the food here kind of feels very distinctive and clean and beautiful and well-prepared and well thought through and craveable. When it comes to steak procurement, we have put together some amazing relationships with ranchers all around the world. So we have our tomahawk in the front is our Australian Wagyu. So when it comes to preparing a great steak, especially with the pedigree of the cuts that we're using here, it's gotta be simple. And so we just simply wash the steaks with an herb-infused olive oil and then hit them with sea salt and then pop them in the broiler to get that really dynamic crust. Oh my God. 
and they cooked up to a perfect 147 degrees. And then our table side, Dover Soul. We're the only restaurant in San Francisco to serve true Dover Soul. Wow. And if you come in the restaurant and I happen to be here that night, I'll, I'll probably be debone it for you table side, which is kind of fun. Wow. I love oysters. Like it's kind of one of those things that if you ask me if there's a couple of things you eat for the rest of your life, oysters are one of them. And so we actually have an estuary tank inside of our kitchen. It's salinated and pH balanced to the ocean. The oysters still think they're in an estuary. So they're still alive and fresh and incredibly plump. And, and so when we crack them open, it's the same as if you pull them straight from the water. We have very hands-on. I enjoy hospitality. I really like it, and so does everybody here in the restaurant. And so we absolutely love opening up the doors of Miller and Lux, throwing a party every single night, and then we don't care if you're wearing like a Warriors jersey or a rock and roll t-shirt to go see a concert. We just love to have you in the house. And the energy in the room is just spectacular. We're just having a great time. Now, Stefan, Miller and Lux is a special place in and of itself, but it's special to you. It is. It's symbolic of my coming of age living in the Bay. You know, I, growing up, I would take the BART to Oracle Arena to watch the Warriors, and we never made it out of the second round of the playoffs. And maybe I get some gum stuck to my shoe or popcorn in my hair, you know, <laughs> sitting up in the nosebleeds. And now we have this brand new Chase Center in San Francisco with the championship basketball team getting served table side by Tyler Florence. It's the definition of winning to me. <laughs> <laughs> And when you think of a steakhouse, you think of only steaks, but this has so many different options. We started with the oysters. And the oysters, I think, really represent what they're doing at Miller & Lux because it was like the freshest oyster I've ever had. And it was served with a mignette with wild pink peppercorns. And it was so good that I just drank it afterwards after <laughs> the oysters were gone. It was so good. Right. So we went for the Caesar salad for two. And I'm not a Caesar salad person, but I said, you know, in the spirit of the experience, I would try it. And they actually prepared it at the table. The lettuce came still growing in the pot. And I was like, I'm really not sure what you're about to do here. <laughs> uh, these are Meyer lemon chips. And then there was the anchovies and everything together. Like I am a Caesar salad convert now because of nice. this yes. experience. A lot of folks I've taken said it's the best Caesar salad they've had. Yes. Yeah. Now let's talk about steak. Yeah. I had the New York strip. I enjoyed the fact that even though it was a New York strip, it still had the bone and I love a bone on a steak. Yeah. When I asked for it medium rare, I usually say that knowing that they're gonna overcook it in some way, but the steak came out perfectly. Mm. We got the porterhouse, which I think is a, a good option to get more variety because you get like the filet as well as the strip steak mm -hmm. all in one. It's like crispy and crunchy and salty and it's just perfectly cooked, mm -hmm. so tender and juicy. I'm simple, I like filet mignon, that's my favorite. I'm not a big fatty or bone person and this filet mignon was just perfection. It was just wonderful. These potatoes are fire. <laughs> So we had a kind of a cream potato that was with it and it was like little fluffy clouds with the wonderful texture. Mm -hmm. It just came together so well. Yeah, it was like a potato cloud from heaven, right? Like <laughs> I, I could sleep potato. in it. <laughs> like, I don't know the recipe, but it seemed like a 10 to 1 ratio of butter to potato. <laughs> and we got the french fries because what's wrong with more potatoes? And, you know, they had black truffles on top and Parmesan yes. cheese. I also had the creamed kale. And I guess it was his take on cream spinach, but it was so much better because it wasn't soggy. Mm -hmm. It was seasoned really nicely. Anything to drink with those steaks? Oh, Oysters? Absolutely. I had the rye Manhattan. It was by far the best Manhattan I've ever had. Just the showmanship of the bartender making mm -hmm. it. And once he poured it in my glass, he ended up putting the rest of it in a carafe and putting it on ice in another bowl. So it was essentially two drinks. It was perfect. You know, starting out the night, they roll up with a champagne cart and it's on ice and there's all these options and they're showing you. So we definitely started with champagne. And all I remember is by the end of the night, I was pushing the cart. Like literally, I was pushing the cart and getting bottles for our table. It was really fun. It is the only way to deliver the champagne yes. <laughs> by the cart. <laughs> so we saw a And what about dessert, Stefan? Oh, I mean, they wheel out this cart full of all these amazing pastries and it's like a mind trick, right? Because I had this strawberry that wasn't a strawberry. Quick 
you. It's like something out of Willy Wonka's garden where you pick it and inside is the strawberry cream with the strawberry jelly and it's white chocolate and dark chocolate surrounding it. Mm. It's so good. It was too beautiful to cut into, but once I did, I ate it like in one bite. So. Nice. Hello, Richard. Sure. The service in that restaurant was A+. plus. Yeah, I feel like for what it is, you definitely get the value, you know, because it's a treat. It's something that you go to when there's a special occasion. You're not going to be spending that money every day, but the bang for your buck is fantastic. You know, you really get to experience what fine dining is all about. Yeah, it's nice. It's new. It's, uh, it's dope. If you would like to try Miller & Lux, it's located on Terre à Francois Boulevard in the Chase Center in San Francisco, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $125. San Francisco has a renowned reputation for outstanding dim sum, but Amy says she's found a place in the East Bay burbs that can rival Chinatown when it comes to savory shoe mai and other Cantonese delights. In Walnut Creek, it's Creek House Dim Sum Restaurant. Creek House Dim Sum is the old traditional Hong Kong style dim sum. <laughs> dim sum means of touching your heart. It's Cantonese tradition. Family and friends get together on the weekend, sit down and talk and drink. We have more than 70 different kinds of dim sum. The entree menu, look, more like traditional kennel style, the menu designed from the master chef. You do the cooking like you do the artwork. My wife Connie, my uh, right arm helping me. My daughter helped me to communicate to the customer. My son helped me do the packing to go order. And my sister Fanny helped me to do the accounting. Hi guys. We can have lobster noodle. Lobster noodle. Yeah. Okay, I can do a lobster noodle for you. Okay. My brother Shaky, he is in a restaurant business all his life. Hi, your people like some nice seafood. My first memory of my brother was this dim sum boy holding the the tray selling dim sum. My friend, here's you. Here you are. That's is big one. Thirteen years in a row, never take a day off. Oh, he's crazy. He worked too much. He's not supposed to be doing this at age of 74. When I get there off, I feel not comfortable. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> Even the day after you come to the restaurant, do something. <laughs> I want to tell him to stop, but I'm kind of afraid. I think this is what keeps him going. <laughs> a quit house make me my American gym come really true. <laughs> like a dream, gym come true. All right, Walnut Creek dim sum, you know, doesn't always equal a hot spot, you wouldn't in your mind, but you're mm -hmm. saying this place rivals Chinatown. Yeah, I feel like it's very authentic representation of what dim sum is. And it's in a strip mall. It looks very unassuming, but don't let that put you off. And the owners have been in the restaurant business their whole life in terms yeah. of having Chinese and Cantonese restaurants, but mm -hmm. came out of retirement. To, exactly. To actually create this This, spot. to me, wow. represents the commitments they have to dim sum, and it shows. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to let the tradition die, and they want to make sure that we all get the taste of it. Do you, do you have any favorites? I you? am a bit of a strange one, because I like the chicken feet, and I especially love the chicken feet here. Mm -hmm. It has this, like, tangy black bean sauce that's just melt in your mouth, and it combines really well with the bony, tenuous, chewy flavor of the chicken feet. And it has to be experienced. Don't let the legs, put the little feet put you off because it is done really well. All right, well, Stefan, you know, they make 70 different dim sums or more. What did you have when you went? Um, we started with the jumbo shiomai and it's definitely bigger than uh, the average dumpling that you get in San Francisco or anywhere else I've been. It was like a pork and shrimp meatball and it was very juicy and I knew the meal was gonna be good after that. <laughs> right, I also had the jumbo shumai. And while the flavor was great, I just felt like the ratio of meat to the um, actual wrapper just 
wasn't. Too much meat? Yeah, it was too much meat. Ah, for me. okay. Yeah, but it did taste delicious. Mm -hmm. Can you ever have too much meat? <laughs> 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 See, I like the jumbo shumai, and it's really hard not to order more mm -hmm. because, you know, we're like, who's going to get the last one, you know? <laughs> we did have a Chinese fried donut. So it's carbs on carbs on carbs. <laughs> and yeah, it's a deep fried Chinese donut that's crispy and salty and fresh out the fryer. And then they wrap the rice noodle around it. So the rice noodle is very fresh and soft. Mm -hmm. and, and that one's really good. Right. We also had the fried sticky rice. Mm -hmm. It was kind of crunchy. It had ginger and it was kind of peppery. That I would definitely order again. Mm -hmm. We also had sauteed string beans with garlic and chili oil. They were just spicy enough and still crunchy. Mm -hmm. We also had the salt and pepper chicken wings. They were fried perfectly. The outside was crispy. They were seasoned wonderfully. They were Awesome. Yeah. We also had the pan fried daikon cakes. Oh, yeah. uh, I love daikon. It's an Asian radish. It's a bit pungent, but very comforting to me. Something I've eaten a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. So it has a nice crispy exterior, but really soft and steamy and, you know, daikon radish inside. Yeah, we had the baked ube buns. And being Filipino, I love ube. So if it's on the menu, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I was going to say, there's uh, a little right, theme. Ube, yeah. yeah, there's a theme here. It's like a purple yam and it has hints of vanilla in there. It was like a baked, warm, glazed bun around it. So it was really good. It came with three, so we ate one and took the rest home to eat with our coffee. Yeah. Did you have anything to drink with it? I had a very special Chinese sangria <laughs> with the... <laughs> I never heard of Chinese sangria. It was really nice. It was obviously a red wine and fruit and lychees in it, and it was very tasty and very drinkable and definitely had a taste of more of it. Uh, that, <laughs> that might bring me back to try. <laughs> about that one. Yeah, I might right. have to try that. All right. All right, if you would like to try Creek House Dim Sum, it's located on Parkside Drive in Walnut Creek, and the average tab per person without drinks is around $25. And now, reporter Cecilia Phillips heads to San Francisco's Fort Mason. For some off-the-grid bites, you've just got to try. <laughs> So Off The Grid's all about creating great mobile experiences that are all temporary. There's no other place, I think in California, where you can consistently find as many food trucks in one place. You got me a chicken satay! <laughs> so I wanted to come and visit you because our audience with Chuckly said that Satay by the Bay was the truck that we had to check out. Uh -huh. What makes your truck so special? Uh, it is special because this is the only Singaporean uh, halal Malay food truck. And not just that, it's actually made with love because I'm continuing uh, my mom's legacy and also with my grandmother's uh, secret peanut sauce. So, what goes into the peanut sauce? Can you tell us? Uh, not really. <laughs> it's a secret recipe. Never! It's mainly peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like swords here fighting over the satay. It's so tender. That's what it is. Thighs are always just. <laughs> <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> I come from Kiev, Ukraine, so borscht is a staple food in our country and a staple food in my home. It's a beet-based soup, uh, beets and cabbage, and it's very healthy. There's many variations, okay. and we provide a garlic bun. I'm going to try yeah. this. Okay. Oh, it's hot. It's supposed to be hot. Mmm. Great. Borscht mobile. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> Cochinita is actually a traditional food in Yucatan, which is cochinita pibil. So the whole point about the pulled pork and the chicken that we carry, we cook it for about eight hours. Tell me about some of the spices that go into making this. Oh, it's a chiote for sure. Um, I'm not going to give you the secrets on TV, but... Um, <laughs> we never get the secrets. Exactly. All right, no, cheers. Salud. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to try mine, but I know mine's good. Well, I know mine's good too. <laughs> So I heard that your truck is the first frozen custard truck in California. It is, yes. It's actually a dual concept truck. We offer churros and frozen custard. Cheers. A little melty. <laughs> I definitely want some more of this, huh? So every third Friday of the month, we like to welcome our dog friends as well as our people friends. And we have Fido Fridays where we have specials at the bar for people who bring their dogs. But tonight, we're doing dachshund races. Go! 
That's right, turn them on, man. So I heard you all do yappy hour for people who have dogs. I happen to have one right here that I found along the way. This is Peanut. Peanut's three months old, way too young. But I'll definitely try some wine. So you've got a red here and you've got a rosé. Cheers. Yappy hour. Not for you. Oh. I have to thank my fantastic guests on this week's show. Amy Finn, who craves the chicken feet at Creek House Dim Sum in Walnut Creek. Stefan Weiner, who says all hail to the Caesar at Miller and Lux in San Francisco. And Tanisha Wallace, who shared her passion for pansy at Fob Kitchen in Oakland. Join us next time when three more guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you all then. Cheers. Cheers. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQED and by... It's our food rescue program that feeds people, not landfills. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine & More offering delivery and curbside pickup options with over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 4,500 spirits. Customers can shop in-store, online, or on our app. Fog Harbor Fish House is a local family-owned restaurant offering sweeping views of the San Francisco Bay. Fog Harbor serves fresh, 100% sustainable seafood featuring specialties including roasted shellfish platters, chipino, and oysters. Located at Pier 39 in San Francisco, reserve at fogharbor.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was started when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check, Please! Bay Area. What makes your brisket so delicious? I think how we cook the brisket. So we cook the brisket for 15 hours. It's a good slow, that's why the brisket comes like so tender, nicely and juicy. So this looks like the fatty end, huh? This is my favorite part. Oh yeah. Go! Ah!